Right, okay. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to see. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a sound check to see what's happening on Periscope here. Um, okay, am I getting anything? Um, right, good. That was an um. So, uh, right, we're now live. Good morning. My name's Roger Lewis. Um, and I'm just going to turn off that there now. Um, Periscope is now off on my phone. Uh, right. Now I'm just going to press screen share. Share screen. Share screen. And the one I want to share should pop up in a minute. That one there is the one I want to share. Share. There she blows. Okay, that is the Gollum X1V blog. And this uh, was a post that David did on January the 1st, 2016. Now, that is um, uh, four years and nine months ago now. Um, and uh, the title of the post, Rebranding Descent, um, really uh, came in. Uh, it was ahead of the Brexit vote. Um, it was ahead of Donald Trump's election in uh, November 2016. Uh, and what David uh, had been looking at was um, various emerging uh trends in in the media dealing with people questioning narratives and one of david's um uh main ideas um about discourse is that one has to challenge starting assumptions um because so much of what uh is set out defining an argument um, at the beginning of a discussion, the ground rules, if you will, um, what I would call boundary conditions, uh, do determine uh, the reference point against which um, arguments as they're developed will be um, held up as a reference. Uh, therefore, with your starting assumptions, uh, you can actually uh, determine the conclusions available to a particular um, discussion, argument, call it what you will. Now, um, I think that is the end point and the starting point of a um, an unroll, a tweet sequence which I have put up today. Now, I use this uh, application, uh, which lots of people use, called the Thread Reader app. I actually pay a subscription to it, which allows me then to download PDF. So you can see I'm quite fond of doing this um, because I find that it actually presents uh, the tweets in, in a way which is quite pleasant to the eye. What I then do is I upload them to a magazine format, which gives a flippable page uh, thing. And yesterday I did one of these where I, I did a video uh, to put at the front of it. So this is on Lumen now. So what I do is I just, uh, instead of having it in the viewer, I put it in the manipulation side of things. And I can just add a blank page at the front. I don't subscribe to Adobe Acrobat. I think it's very expensive and I tend to use other free tools or cheaper tools um, to, to uh, access their proprietary uh, uh, stuff. I mean, I don't use Windows. I use Linux, for instance, I don't, um, GNU Linux. I don't use Microsoft Office. I use OpenOffice. Um, and I tend to use, uh, actually, if I just show you here, my computer here, it's an old Mac Pro from 2006. So it's quite an old machine. 
uh, but I have the latest version, 64-bit version of uh, of Ubuntu. Well, I've got Ubuntu 18.04. They've got 20 out now, so um, uh, I'm caning my processor by the looks of it because everything seems to be freezing. Um, let's just see what's happening. Uh, just see what's happening on Periscope. Okay, right. Well, that's come out. It comes up on per Periscope okay, right. well, really, really quite quickly. Per right. Okay. So this is the all the apps that I have, um, and uh, there's a downloader for videos. Audacity's uh, sound processing thing. Uh, Atom is a. Um, uh, it, it, it's basically a, a programming app. OBS, I can stream live onto YouTube. I'm using StreamYard. StreamYard allows you to stream to various different uh, platforms. Uh, OpenShot is a video editor, which I use. I mean, I've got several of those. Um, Pale Moon is a, an, an open source browser, um, as is this, Sombrero, OpenBazaar. Well, Play on Linux is uh, like a, 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 a like a wine type thing. I, I, I don't want to get into all the nerdiness of all of this, um, but what is interesting um, about the thread, or interesting to me anyway, may not be interesting to you. Um, is David's appearance in the uh, documentary released by Universal, uh, we need to talk about AI. Now, David is a science documentary filmmaker. And before I knew David personally, we're, we're good mates now. Um, David, uh, I, I first came across David, uh, a documentary which he made um, called Dangerous Knowledge. Um, and um, that's something which I've been trying to encourage David to put a, a, a high definition uh, version up of on, on, on Vimeo um, or even to do a tour of it with, with uh, you know, a QA and a, a Q &A afterwards, um, which is something hopefully I'll talk with him when I see him in the next few weeks. I'll, I'll be going up to Scarborough to visit David in the next few weeks and uh, maybe uh, do a video, a video that David and I discussed the other day about doing was to discuss with Chloe Timberley her uh, Generation Rent book um, and uh, have David and Kimberley discuss uh, David's book um, Generation Debt or the Debt Generation. Now, um, so this thread which I'm putting up and we'll be putting in a, 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 a Yumpu document so you can flick through it and click on the links and so forth, uh, starts with this um, interview uh, which I, I uploaded to BitChute um, of David being interviewed. Um, I think it was by the Institute of Ideas or something. Um, let me just, uh, uh, let's just click on. I'm not sure what happens if I click on the link in there at the moment. When it's, it goes into Yumpa, I think the links actually work. Um, Anyway, that's an interview where David is talking about his most recent project, which is Red Group Green Blue RGB, which I've been doing. I, I was fortunate to do a bit of proofreading for David on that on the early chapters, and we've discussed it at various points. And he's now got a publisher for, which is great news. Um, which is a book and a film, and the other book uh, which I did some proofreading on, which David has done, is a book coming out of the. Um, we need to talk about AI. Um, David was hired by the uh, producers and the director, particularly the director is a personal friend, uh, friend of David's, uh, to actually do the interviewing. Um, and uh, so a lot of the interviewers and the, you know, the uh, vox pops or, you know, the pieces to camera of people talking, it's David has, has been doing those interviews. Uh, but also David himself features in, in, in the documentary as well. And I've uploaded a, a copy of it. Um, it to me, it reminded me of uh, Russell Brand's film, um, the process of it being 
not given a full cinema release this is not not the actual film itself uh but but russell brand's film the emperor's new clothes uh which came out in about 2015 i think it was uh sony entertainment uh, uh were the distributors of that um and uh it didn't get a full cinema release which i think is a great shame because it's a good film um and uh again this because of the um COVID-19 uh, business uh, also um, went straight to things like Curiosity Stream or whatever. You can down, you, you can actually have a paid download. If you can afford to do that, then, you know, um, please, please do make the effort. Uh, but but um, you'll be able to stream a lower quality uh, version of it, which I just stuck up on BitChute. Now, just a word on BitChute. BitChute is a distributed um, network uh, platform uh, which allows uh, video streaming not live video streaming as yet but but um, effectively it's it's sat on a distributed network of computers um, I'm not sure if it acts as I, I, IPFS um, or one of the other distributed networks uh, and so it's not a central server based model it's a distributed um, computer uh, uh, network um, which makes it harder to uh, sensor and so the uh, answer to that which uh, Twitter have come up with is, is when you try to click on a, uh, a bit shoot link now uh, what you'll actually find is that you'll get a warning saying Twitter, um, Twitter thinks that this may be unsafe now uh, the only thing that is unsafe about going to bit shoot is nothing to do with damaging your computer but they think it might damage your uh, critical uh, faculties in the sense that it may wake up your critical faculties um, back in the day uh, uh, when things like BitTorrent sites like um, uh, Pirate Bay and things like um, oh, there were lots of torrent sites um, which got taken down people like Aaron Schwartz his work uh, the late Ari Schwartz, um, things like Silk Road, um, the guy guy that did that is still serving hard time uh, for you know, effectively just for enabling a platform uh, which some people sell drugs on. Um, well, hey, the internet generally, even now, people sell all sorts of awful stuff, um, and it's a bit like the pot ke calling the kettle black. Um, now not getting into all the geeky stuff we'll we'll see that as we go along but anyway here's david um and uh, we started with um rebranding descent nearly five years ago now david wrote that and david hasn't been writing that much on the blog lately um so here is a video on um one of the very few video blogs that david did sadly um david uh did this one called Trouble in Bankland, which is really, really very, it's worth listening to. Um, and this was, I think, put out either just before or just after when he ran for group, uh, leadership of, of, of the Green Party of England and Wales. He came second. I, I helped him with that campaign. I'm, I'm not a member of any political party. Uh, and when David rang me up saying, I'm thinking of doing this, what do you think? And I said, well, I think you're mad. But if you think it will do any good, I, you know, I'll, 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 I'll help you for all the good my help did. But, but the point was um, that at that time, the Green Party had a policy about monetary reform, uh, policy EC661, I think it was, um, talking about... Uh, sovereign money issuing money uh in a similar way to the way that positive money were advocating at that stage now both the green party and uh positive money in my opinion have been pretty much subverted uh black lives matter as well um i, I put out a video uh the Re revolution will not be um televised so, uh there was an interview on um, i think it was real media or something the, the u.s version or um uh one such of the more alternative um us uh news outlets and um i was quite taken with this uh, but at that point they were actually saying you know we're not telling people to vote for bernie sanders or to vote for anyone in particular uh our own it, that th this person that represented the came on said you know, it's not really any point in voting it's not really meant to change anything so don't get your hopes up but if you want to and it makes you feel better then who are we to tell you not to now 
<laughs> that's not the same Black Lives Matter at the moment that's running round, running rampage, um, causing all sorts of uh, issues and problems for uh, the very communities that they claim to represent. But lots of them, as we know, come from outside of the areas that they go into and trash. Um, and again, my, my contention is that Black Lives Matters, as was Occupy back in the day, you know, have all been infiltrated, um, otherwise sidelined, divide and rule, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, controlled opposition, gatekeepers, useful idiots, all of these sort of things sort of spring to mind. Um, oh, 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 just on that point, there's a very good writer called Dr. Stuart Brammel, who's a, um, a medical doctor uh, who's from California, now living in New Zealand, been hounded out of the States for basically, uh, um, she wrote a very good article about uh, gatekeepers, controlled opposition, etc., and, and various CIA intrigues in certain publications, including things like um oh buzzfeed uh vice vice magazine that that's a very interesting one uh but but you know there are others um and uh, in fact plenty of them uh the german academic uh, not the german journalist a couple of years back who actually said you know i've been in the pay of the cia for many years and uh uh you know, meddling in, in media is, is nothing new. Advisors to Hollywood movies, for instance, uh, you know, the action movies and all the rest of it, there's usually a CIA guy or a Pentagon guy that's, uh, you know, on the payroll and, and making sure it's uh, sort of accurate, as it were, um, or on message, perhaps. So anyway, th th these are just, you know, by way of a size. People like David, who, who's... Um, was a Horizon producer, and so, as his father was before him, and David says in the interview that Adrian, his father, produced um, Cosmos with Carl Sagan. Um, my favourite documentary series of his is um, The Age of Uncertainty, which he made with, um, uh, what's he called now, The Economist, um, G.K. Galbraith. It's a wonderful series um, made in the uh, late 1970s. Um, but anyway, that's David on Trouble in Bankland talking actually about equity release mortgages uh, in, in this uh, and stress testing banks, etc. Um, and David wrote a lot about ETFs, exchange traded funds and stuff like that. Uh, back, you know, back, back after the 2008 financial crisis. Now, The Debt Generation was a book that grew out of comments that David made on the Guardian newspaper. You now you try and do that today. There's now a new paper called Off Guardian, which uh, has basically started because the Guardian stopped really publishing uh, free speech comments. Um, it's all right if you agree with the article or the narrative coming out of the Guardian, but if you uh, uh, put an alternative point of view, uh, you'll be um, banished. Uh, so. That's what Off Guardian grew out of. Um, but the Jet Generation, um, uh, it was published and, and, and uh, the driving force behind it was a, a guy called Mark Tanner who did a brilliant job in editing and bringing together uh, David's comments, etc. And then the Gollum X1V blog grew out of that. Now, um, as I say, David hasn't been blogging um, and obviously he's been busy, not least, last year with the artificial, you know, we need to talk about AI movie, uh, but also working on two other book projects, which for those of us that are, were avid uh, Gollum uh, readers wow. uh, will be, you know, pleased to hear. Um, and as I say, I'm hoping to be able to get um, Chloe, David, my other friend, uh, Ranjan Bamakumaran together and possibly uh, I was in touch with Dr. Richard Verner yesterday who in my mind is the foremost academic uh, on uh, numesticism or the science of money um, in, 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 in modern ages. I mean for me he's the uh, you know up there with Schumpeter um, and you know a guy called Martin Schubig, who, who, who I'm quite a big fan of. I mean, uh, um, uh, Richard Werner, I think, is a brilliant 
a, a, a brilliant mind, a great writer. Um, he wrote uh, Princes of the Yen, which was also produced as a movie. Um, and uh, getting um, these more thinking voices uh, together to, to discuss some of these things is, is precisely what David's father did with um, uh, The Age of Uncertainty with G.K. Galbraith. And I think this sort of thing is long overdue rather than the sort of pseudo, uh, rather contrived efforts that, 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 um, that, that, you know, the sanitized efforts, which, um, uh, mainstream broadcasters these days tend to do the same with politicians you know um any, anyone that saw the famous thing of um oh the streatham mp whatever he was called something without trace now uh when he was sort of saying i'm not going to go off piste on this interview you know and they all talk about gotchas and all the rest of it and what they mean by that is is that they're being asked a question which they haven't rehearsed their lines for it's kind of a karaoke politics which uh i think is uh designed to encourage an environment in which sophistry uh, uh, will, will thrive and has thrived, it has to be said. So anyway, that's, um, that's the debt generation. And then we come on to, uh, this was an interview I did with David. Um, uh, it's, I don't know, it's about an hour and a half long. That's the full thing. It's cut up into segments and the different segments are, um, itemized the sound quality isn't great i was in sweden david was in scarborough um david was on an ipad you know with all the different some connections but i, I, I you know i stand by it. i think it's a good interview um then this is uh horizon the 30th anniversary edition the far side which i hunted high and low to find it because um there are several documentaries uh, which horizon made which are difficult to find this is one of them another one is um icon earth but the third one is the human laboratory and the human laboratory is nowhere to be found. and guess what that's about um it's actually about vaccination and sterilizations in Africa carried out by Big Pharma. Um, the transcript is available. You'll find it on the uh, Wikispooks blog and you'll find it, if, if you put um, the Human Laboratory Horizon documentary, it will come up. Janka Blinsky uh, worked on that and, and uh, I've been trying to find it and I haven't I think I found it in a couple of places, but I haven't actually gone in and ripped it out of the sites yet. Um, I will do that um, at, at some point, but I'm very busy with my business at the moment. And, and uh, uh, I mean, if anyone has got a copy of it on an old VHS or something and would like to send it to me or, or just digitize it and put it up, that would be fantastic. The, the other documentary I looked at the other day, which was quite interesting, uh, was Johnny Come Home. That's another one completely disappeared off, off the internet. Um, I watched that as a young kid at home. Um, it was on ITV uh, before and after the 10 o'clock news. Uh, um, and it was about uh, Johnny Two-Tone. It was a kid that got murdered by a notorious paedophile um, who operated around the King's Cross area um, and was tied up in something called Playland. Um, uh, Playland figures in a couple of other interesting sort of spooky type documentaries. Uh, it features in a book called Romeo Spy, which is quite an interesting book, which you'll, if you search my blog or my Tome Freaks, you'll find, you'll find that there's actually an interview with uh, the Romeo Spy uh, by um, oh, the very amusing Cardiff uh, BBC producer also made the one about David Icke and the lizards and stuff. Um, uh, and uh, oh, he also wrote the one about Twitter shaming and stuff like that. Uh, his name's escaping my mind just at the moment. So anyway, this is David's documentary which is on Curiosity Stream made with a Oxford physicist, um, uh, Ard something. Uh, that's a very good series, wonderful series. And then this is Icon Earth, which is the, the other hard to find um, Horizon documentary. And then this is the interview that David did with Real Media, which was produced by our mutual friend Ranjan Bamakumaran. 
And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, David wrote an article about money laundering uh, for Reuters, which was spiked. Um, and this is recounting that experience. And then we come to this here, which is uh, uh, Jonathan Sugarman, who's um, the Unicredit um, whistleblower uh, and who has had nothing but uh, penury and uh, strife visited at his door by the establishment for inconveniently pointing out that uh, uh, that the whole of the European banking system is effectively a farce, corrupt, um, otherwise not fit for purpose, um, and uh, operates under the basis of one rule for them and one rule for everybody else. They're basically a bunch of, co uh, of crony capitalists is what they are. Uh, I don't know, a bunch of tax farmers, perhaps we could call them that. What else might we call them? Crooks. I think crooks would be a good one. I think that uh, um, Noel Edmonds would agree with that, with the uh, HBOS and um, RBS uh, business restructuring unit in Reading. I noticed that there's some question over the Bristol branch of Lloyd's uh, in, uh, in the press recently as well. Um, and uh, but Jonathan Sugarman is a modern, modern hero uh, who, who's had a devil of a time since blowing the whistle in 2007 um, and I was happy to see that he's still tweeting his Twitter account is uh, it, it is uh, there which is at whistle capital I capital R capital L uh, but you'll find find the links to that on here and then 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 I've put a couple of other uh, things on here this is a blog I did uh, about Ariadne's ball of string tracing back through um, how I came across uh, David's blog in the first place. I was recommended to look at it by someone called Stevie Finn. And Steve is an artist, a sculptor, uh, who regularly um, corresponded with other commenters in, in the Gollum blog. Uh, but I was referred from the Sturdy blog, um, which uh, posed the question back in the day of to whom do we owe this money exactly? Uh, a really good blog, which he's taken down. So I don't know why. Um, he, he, he's some sort of Labour Party spin merchant is sturdy. And um, uh, obviously, uh, for whatever reason, um, he agreed to take that blog down. So I've reproduced it on my blog and it's up there and you can go and have a look at it. You can find it on the Wayback Machine as well if you want to. Um, so that's that. And this is one of my computing heroes as this guy and Ted Nelson are my two two um, big heroes. There are a few others, but but um, Richard Stallman wrote all the libraries and started uh, the uh, GNU, not Linux, um, not, not Unix rather. GNU stands for GNU, not Unix. It's, it, it's a meaningless sort of, you know, circular thing, GNU. Um, so, I mean, basically, it's an open source software, uh, which is what I'm into. So that's Richard Stallman. Here's another one of my heroes. This is uh, Roy Madron, uh, who wrote the book Guy and Democracies and um, has another book, um, which is called, was called Supercompetent Democracies. Um, so the links to that. And then this is a link to the wiki ballot uh, wiki, which which I built um, in conjunction uh, or discussions with uh, John Ward of the slog. Um, and so that's there, you know, have a look at that. And then this is a discussion I had with John uh, Hearn, who's a professor of economics and lectures on banking um, in, in, in the city of London. And John and I are kind of online friends. I, I haven't met John in person yet. He and a guy called um, Tim Goldfinch. I am going to have a beer with them when I'm in London in October. I think they'll be available then. Um, and uh, I, I interviewed John because um, we have various differences of opinions about uh, money. In fact, Professor Richard Berner and John have, have had a bit of a discussion too. And, and I, I, I'm with Richard Berner and not with John, but I like John. He's a nice guy. Uh, and he's 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 up for a discussion uh, without ad hominem and all the rest of it. So, uh, you know, good on John. Um, uh, we agree on quite a lot of things, but but there are a couple of fundamental kind of starting assumptions, if you will, uh, which, which uh, we we haven't agreed upon. 
Um, and uh, based on the last few years, it seems that we've a long way to go before we, we perhaps will. Uh, but but um, as I said earlier in my comments about Richard Werner, I, I find Richard's work convincing and, uh, you know, it, in in some ways, I, I, I guess I could even be described as a disciple of the work of Richard Werner. Um, and uh, uh, I think the catechism of, uh, of, 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 of John Hearn is, is perhaps not one that, that, that uh, uh, sits, sits within my own belief system, as, as, as it were, about uh, you know, even what money is and has been, rather than what it can be. You know, it's an abstract, whatever. I mean, it is, it, it's a belief system. It's based on confidence. People will tell you that. Well, what, what does confidence involve? It involves believing in something enough to act upon it and all of that sort of thing. So that's that. And then the next one here, this is uh, one of the pages of my blog supporting my novel, which is called Conquest of Doe, on the chronology of human society. And then there are a couple of... Uh, um, interesting quotes one from george soros uh, but this one particularly uh, comes from a uh, a book which i don't think was ever published um which was called towards unity um which is a really good book i mean i have read it because it's available online i think by the the way back machine now uh, but this this quote here is written by a guy called stuart hastings and he was talking to this guy guru guruji OK, and it says, if you're going to dig up history, you have to dig it all up. If they dig up 60 years, I will dig up 600. If we go back far enough in the history, always there will be some grievance. And I'll fight on him. I'll fight on you. I'll fight on everyone. Where is the beginning? I cannot find it. Dig up all the problems and you will find they have a root cause in one place. Greed. Where there is greed, there is no satisfaction. Um, very wise words, I think. Um, I think Leonardo da Vinci is quoted in uh, Flights of the Mind um, as saying that uh, uh, no man is truly rich if he desires anything. Um, be quite, yeah. I mean, these are interesting... I oh, know the aphorisms, plays on words, observations, um, or whatever they are, um, and whatever they kind of uh, open up in terms of your own critical faculties. Um, you know, uh, go, go, go for it! I say, um, and 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 you know, give things a good looking over. You know, look before you leap. Uh, so then. Um, then I've got uh, a link to my poetry collection. This was an introduction from David to the poetry collection, which, which he did for me a few years back. Uh, and then finally, I round off this uh, edition of the Grub Street Journal on Yumpu, which is obviously what seems to be what this is becoming. Um, there's this very satirical um, uh, take on the... Uh, statistical, um, what should we call it, promiscuity of uh, certain epi epidemiologists um, in, uh, in the current narrative uh, circus surrounding uh, COVID, SARS-2-19, Contract-19, Chinese flu, um, epidemic, masks, social distancing, lockdowns. Um, if you haven't heard any dissenting views or any skeptical views, uh, you're not doing science or you're not thinking scientifically. Think about that. It's worth thinking about that, I think. Anyway, so, so that's where that then wraps up. And then let's just get a choice quote from, from David. Uh, maybe not. It seems that the... Oh, here we go. Right. Right, from professionalised democracy to demonise dissent. Um, it's worth reading this whole thing, but uh, the threat from the irrational... 
Right, so here we are. Just we're talking about belief systems and all the rest of it. So David delivers for us at the end here. So here we go. Um, extremism is a problem out there on the fringes of society. Irrationalism. The paranoid fear of imagined dangers and those who promote such fears is the enemy within. They are the sinister fringe who constantly look to radicalize the inexpert. So let us recite the liturgy our leaders would have us believe that in the 21st century, democracy is the freedom to choose wisely. In a globalized interdependent world, we cannot afford to choose irrationally or disastrously. It is not what you believe, but how you believe it. Believe things rationally based on evidence with regard to how your beliefs affect those around you. If you know someone who doesn't, they may be irrational and suffering from a mental disorder in which the personal notoriety of being contrarian matters more to them than any harm they might do to the safety and stability we all depend on. Hmm. Thanks, David, mate. You've been an inspiration over the years and uh, see you soon.